breaking news out of London that could have serious economic and political reverberations. The pound falling sharply, plummeting against the dollar. The British public are waking up to a future outside of the European Union. Go down in our history as our Independence Day. We are beginning to hear rumours from our sources at White Hart Lane. We've just received a statement from the chairman, Daniel Levy, as we look to protect the investment made in our new state following the decision to leave the EU. We have decided that the best way to prepare for the impending departure from Europe is to sell all of our foreign players with immediate effect. And we are now hearing that Pochettino has left Spurs. Mauricio Pochettino has resigned from his position as Tottenham Hotspur Sources manager. Sources close to Mr Pochettino have stated that he wasn't willing to work under the strict conditions imposed by Daniel Weber. There is mass unrest at the club as their foreign stars are forced out and the Spurs saga rolls on. The new football season is looming ever closer. Tottenham are yet to find a replacement for Maurizio Pochettino. Odds are favourites to huddle like Red Nap have distanced themselves from the role of Holland, even stating that no one of sound mind would take this job on. Spurs have finally appointed a new manager and they will be unveiled at a press conference tomorrow. Oh, good lord. Have you seen who it is? Have you? <laughs> oh, my. Um, you're still on air. Oh. Still on air. It doesn't matter, they're still getting relegated. And we are pleased to unveil the new manager of Tottenham Hotspur. Whoa, 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 pleased? Pleased? Is that it? Not delighted? Elated? Any of the other words you want to choose that are definitely better than pleased? Right, I suppose you wish you'd uh, answer some questions as this is a press conference. You at the back. When does the real manager arrive? Unnecessary. All aboard the insane train. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've said it three times. Get over it. Welcome to the homegrown hotspur. That doesn't work. Welcome to homegrown hotspur breaking Brexit. Yes, that's better. We'll, we'll get used to that eventually. This is the first time. We screwed it up. Well done. After that intro, did everyone like it? Did you enjoy it? Let me know. Comment section down below. Was it enough? Was it too much? It was too much, wasn't it? Too, too much noise. Too epic. I'm sorry. As this is the uh, first episode in the brand new series, uh, why don't we get a few likes on it? How about 200? Yeah, I'm mental. Get over it, okay? Help me out. 200. It's not too much to ask, is it? I don't think so. Everyone loves a new series. So, as you can probably guess, there's two elements to this save. It's homegrown and it's hotspur. And we've got to break Brexit or beat Brexit. Battle Brexit. Damn it, I can't remember what... Bloody word I've used in the title. This is going ever so well. So before we jump into this meeting with our beloved, bold chairman, Daniel Levy, you can see that he's wanting to play possession football, play attacking football, sign young players for the first team and develop players using the club's youth team or youth system. One of those two. It's, it's irrelevant. And obviously he's added the caveat, but he's not stated it there because I don't know why, in all honesty, maybe he should put it there, but he hasn't. That we can only use British players and we've got to get rid of all the foreigners because he's a xenophobe, obviously. I'm, I need to say that for the benefit of my lawyers, um, Daniel Levy is not a xenophobe. I didn't say anything. All right, good. Now, we can't sign Northern Irish players because they're not part of Britain. You can check on Wikipedia. If you disagree with it, check it out. If, if, if you think I'm wrong, by all means, link me up and we can have a discussion about it or something. Or just not. It's, it's boring. Now, Spurs have had quite a history of exotic foreign imports. I mean, Jürgen Klinsmann, one. Stefan Everson, two. Ozzy Ardiles, yes. Uh, and um, Ronnie Rosenthal. What? The difficulty in this save is going to be getting rid of the players who've probably only just joined. I mean, this is... We're in... 2016 here at this point, July, start of the save. 
we're using vanilla database so no database changes probably because any new signings will make it even more difficult to ship those on but also in terms of narrative and we all love a narrative don't we yes we bloody do that's why you're here because you want one a narrative that is filth absolute filth but the difficulty alongside that is being able to sign British players because they're a bit expensive and clubs don't want to just let their prized possessions go for, for pennies on the dollar, which is ironic because we're not allowed to sign players using dollars anymore. So, damn, or something. We've got to put a team together that is going to remain competitive in the league and the Champions League without... Ah, uh, well, first team players, we're losing a number of them and we've got to build it along or with a young spine of British players. Hard hard stuff and of course brexit hasn't happened in this save yet we're only preparing for it at this point so it could well throw up a lovely spanner in those works that we uh, don't get the hard brexit and therefore we've sold all of our prized assets for next to nothing because no one would sign them for no reason at all so that would be lovely when that happens inevitably won't it because yeah the the narrative likes to Shove its fist in my face. Got a new chair, by the way. Daniel Levy treated me, obviously. Didn't mean what I said earlier. Probably didn't mean what I said earlier. So we'll get through with this meeting, and then we'll start looking at who's got to go. And my word, lots of can go. Lots are going to have to go. Attend this meeting. Well, oh, well. We all know how this goes. Yes, blah blah blah. Yeah, I'd love to know more about the club. It's going to change. Yes, we all know about this. So he wants possession football, attacking football. He doesn't want much, does he? Jesus bloody cross! You go on, sunshine. S talking about shine, that head. Oh, good lord. Yes, yes, yes. We'll do we've already met the journalist. I don't know what he's talking about. Yes, the oh well, that's a very English name, Jesus Perez or Jesus. Uh, he's going to be on the chopping block as well because it's not just the players that are going to be chopped off or ridded of. We're going to have to get rid of all of the staff that are not British. There are some quite drastic implications from that and you'll see those once we get through these meetings. It brings a tear to my eye. Several eyes. Several tears even. I only have two eyes. Well, oh, these, these are some fantastic suggestions. Rick Karsdorp, Dutch. Divock Origi not English and Leon Bailey equally not English I mean he plays for Genk what 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 nationality Jamaican brilliant Jesus Perez we've already mentioned him he's he's uh pretty decent he was uh Pochettino's right hand man he didn't follow him strangely enough that's a bit odd I, I don't know why he didn't he was with him at Southampton so you would expect him to follow him around everywhere but no he didn't he stayed and he's probably going to depart very soon I say probably he is departing there is no doubt about it. Mr. Levy has already said, um, yeah, uh, Perez, get rid of him. Don't like him. Don't like the cut of his jib. What's a jib? I mean, seriously, nonsense words. Anyone else? Anyone else? Tony Jimenez, Tony with an I. He, he, he looks happy about it, obviously. He hasn't seen the fact he's going to get um, his walking papers very shortly. He's another one who joined him from, in fact, he's been at the Spaniel, then it's out, he's basically following him around like a bad smell. He's like a Spanish Tim Flowers. Oh no. Oh no, I'm going to have to do that. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm going to have to do it. Pat Jennings. I mean, to be honest, I'd sack him for that hair anyway. He has been at the club for forever and a day. He's been the goalkeeping coach since 1993 with a, a few breaks in between. I'm going to have to sack him because he's Northern Irish. There's going to be uproar. I mean, they've, they've already had riots, as you've seen in the intro. Oh, dear Lord, what are they going to say now? And Miguel Diagostino, he, um, he's he got a, a sensible jawline, but he will also be departing the club. Another one, basically. Pochettino's little madmen band something, I don't know. Band of merry men, that was probably what I was going for. Oh, no. No. Oh, I forgot about this. Timo Tainio. He's not so tiny team, yo. He's going to be leaving as well. The Finnish wonder. Drissa Diallo. Oh, you're better than you ever were as a player. <sighs> Another one of Pochettino's band of merry men. Ian Broomfield, you're Mick Brown. 
oh no, this feels like I'm shooting a little dead horse. I mean, he looks like a jockey. I mean, that's not... He does look like a jockey. Look at those sunken eyes. I mean, he's, he looks like he's close to death. And I'm having to sack him. Oh, just because you're Irish. That's racist, isn't it? Fortunately, all of the medical staff survive. What about the under-23s, though? What about the under-23s? Ugo, oh, they're all English. Ugo Ekiog is bloody hopeless. How did... It, how did he get a promotion? I mean, what is going on with the world? I think we're going to have to have a bit of a, more of a shake-up than I thought, and it might see some English staff getting booted out as well, because they're chuffing hopeless. Oh, let's have a look at these. Ah, uh, Justin Cochran, the only one. Is, is that Antiguan? Yeah, Antiguan and Barbudan. Well, that is exotic. He's played for Rushton Diamonds. Oh, dear Lord. So, I'm going to get sacking, I'm going to get signing, and I'll see you in a few moments where you will join me to see who we've brought in, who we've not brought in, the tactics that we're going to be starting with, and then inevitably changing after a three games when we've lost four on the bounce and my job is already under threat because that's inevitably what's going to happen. All right, we're back then, and we're in August. We've skipped the whole of July, we've done all the hard work, we've got the team together just about as good as we can get it. I didn't realise how expensive English players are. In fact, any players that play in the Premiership that are not foreign are, um, for a better word, f***ing expensive. Extortionate. I mean, oh, this is not easy. Not easy. By any stretch of the imagination. You might notice we've got a new assistant manager, Terry McDermott. Why wouldn't we? Of course, he's bloody brilliant. And he's old. Because so, we, we had to get rid of Mick Brown. It's like, we shot that horse. So we had to get a new old horse in. A stud. And that's what he is. He's got a tash and everything. Stud-like. Of course, you want to know who we've, who we've got rid of and who we've signed. So, shall we go through those right now? I think we shall. A number of players went out on free transfers. They were never going to earn a transfer fee. Toby Alderweireld, however, has joined rivals Liverpool in a cut price deal 22.5 million pounds yeah I know it's ridiculous Cameron Carter Vickers lots of potential and we've had to sell him on to Sevilla because no one else was interested Eric Lamella has gone to Paris Saint-Germain for a fee of 18 million so not too far off his current value that's not too bad Jan Vertonghen is very similar 15 million for him which again is when they're it, the difficulty with getting rid of the player seems to not be the value it's the wage that they've already been paid Hugo Lloris has gone to Monaco again a massive cut price deal at least 5 million after 130k no wonder it's Monaco he's gone to Christian Eriksen the only way I could get rid of him was on loan so we still technically own him but hopefully he performs I don't know if I put a clause in the contract with Valencia so that they can buy him at some time throughout his loan, but hopefully someone will come into him come into him. Come in for him at the end of the season. Kevin Vimmer has joined Atletico on loan. Another fantastic prospect. Damn. Another player to another rival. Son Yun Ming has joined Manchester United on loan. Adamola Lookman, now I've kind of given it away. He's joined QPR on loan. We'll get back to that side of it. The rest of the players have all gone out on loan. So, Michel Vorm, no fee there. He's gone on loan to PSV. There is a opportunity for them to buy him for about a million pounds. Not expecting an awful lot. Moussa Dembele has moved to Monaco. And there we go. That's about the only sort of players of note that really need to be pointed out. There are still a few loitering around, but that's it. So, the inbound transfers brought in Ben Foster. He is the best English goalkeeper that we could get that wasn't being offered out for an exorbitant fee, namely Fraser Forster. We also l looked at Jack Butland. Do you know how much Stoke wanted for Jack Butland? £35 million. £35 million. Crackers. Absolute crackers. Joe Ledley, the only Welsh player we've added to the side. We needed a bit of steel in midfield, and that's the intention there. We don't really have anyone that can play that sort of more defensive-minded role. Victor Wanyama will be a big miss, so we needed someone to fill that physical void. He's not quite as strong, but he's got a bit more pace about him. Hopefully, he's going to do a job for us in the middle of the park. Benekafobi from Bournemouth. Yes, we were going in for Callum Wilson. Yeah, but she's... 96 million. 96 million they wanted for Callum Wilson. I mean, seriously... 
play the game, but he's a complete forward. He can play both roles. He can play in behind the striker as well. So he will play up front with Harry Kane if we choose to play with two strikers. If we don't, then he'll rotate with Mr. Kane, obviously. Tom Ince is a cheap signing from Derby, actually. We need a bit of pace and decent finishing out wide if we're going to play inside forwards again trying to replace Eric Lamella and Son Stephen Corker is back at Spurs after quite well he's been he's been around the houses in fact in the three years he's been away from Spurs he's been at a number of clubs so all's fair in love and war I suppose I don't know why that's relevant in all honesty having sold Alderweireld and Jan Vertonghen so he's got a pair of big boots to fill said boots just for those naughty folk of you. Joe Lolly, a surprising acquisition. And again, a really cheap one. He can play all across the midfield. Gives us plenty of options on probably playing the, the, the lower cup games, if nothing else. Ah, oh, nice Joe. Oh, that's a, a Lolly old signing. That's sorry. Sorry. I've got another one. Didn't cost a lot of Lolly. We've already touched on him briefly. No, we haven't. I haven't touched him at all. A sign from Charlton, yes. This save is in a period where Everton hadn't signed him, okay? So that's clarification there for anyone who's about to get their pitchforks out and say, oh, he was Everton, no he's not. But One player we have poached from Tottenham though, uh, Tottenham, Everton. Jesus Christ, useless. Oh, ow, oh, I should have learnt from that last time. It seems that Barnsley are doing a pretty good turn of making centre-halves that they sell to Everton and then Everton sell on for lots of money. Jack Grealish, uh, perhaps another surprise addition. Jack Grealish is a young English player, but a risk. He is Irish. Yes, he's declared for the national team, but he hasn't played for the, the full national side yet. So he could get poached by Ireland still, and if he does, then, well, we lose him out. Lose out on him. Next, Chris Waddle. Freddie Woodman is our young prospect who's going to be playing in goal and backing up Ben Foster. Will Hughes, we sign him for 15.5 million, which is actually a pretty decent price for someone who has got potential to be rather special. I had him in Football Manager 2016 in my Blackburn save, and I've wanted to have Big Willie back in the club, and we have Big Willie back. So in all three of my Football Manager saves on YouTube, I've had a player called Willie or Will. I don't have a problem, before you ask. No, no problem here at all. Jamal Lasenes will be playing centre-half for us. Another young player with half-decent potential. Maybe, maybe not quite as much as I was expecting to have. The scout report did suggest he would have more potential, but eh. Ravel Morrison is a recent addition. On loan from Lazio after a certain player had an injury. And as you can see, he's now injured, so... That's bloody brilliant, isn't it? And a utility man, Ashley Young, who's 31. So he's not really young. Maybe they should change his name to Ashley Old. One thing for sure he will not be on is corner routines. Even though it says 14, that's a bloody lie. I don't think I've ever seen him take a corner that has not failed to hit the first man defending the near post in the face. So this is how our squad shapes up then. Obviously, we've got... A fantastic spine of really good English players. We've got Eric Deer or Dyer, depending on how he plays, to be honest. <laughs> we'll most likely be playing Eric Deer with a defensive role in midfield somewhere, but he obviously can slot in at centre back more than adeptly. Insanely fast, insanely adept, technically for a centre back or a defensively minded midfielder. He, he's pretty damn good. Look, look at this. I mean, He's perfect. He's pacey. He's technically gifted. He can tackle. He can mark. He's got to be one of the best fullbacks, wingbacks, any backs in this game, at least in England. And that's all three star current ability. Even his mentals don't let him down. Carl Walker, another player I had in my Blackburn save last year. Oh, he's just fantastic. Doesn't stop going. Quick as anything, explosive fullback is bloody right. Let's just hope he doesn't go a bit too mental and actually go because we can't really place him, replace him too easily. Although we do have Kieran Trippier to back him up when he's not injured. Deli Alley, well, oof, this guy, wonder kid, goodness. What does, does does it say? What he could be the next? That is a name. 
Bama Delhi Jermaine Alley. Oh. No wonder he shortened it. Good Lord. Another really interesting youth prospect is Joshua Anoma. I'm hoping to see excellent things from him. Got some potential to be great as long as I play him. Marcus Edwards. He's the player that was compared to Messi earlier in the season. Hopefully, he's going to reach that sort of billing. I'm going to start bleeding this young man in very early, as soon as I can. If He'll perhaps rotate with Deli Alley or at least play in cup competitions. I really want to get the best out of this guy. He looks like he could be spectacular. Nothing needs to be said. He's barely earning any money. He's He's got four years on his contract. He can do it all, pretty much, just about. He's basically a modern Alan Shearer before he got old and... Had his, although, look at that hairline. It, it, he's trying to be Alan Shearer, isn't he? With a beard. So our last bit of business then is to have a look at how we're going to set up with all these new additions. Well, we're going to go for a 4-4-1-1 and then we're obviously a 4-4-2 if we want to go slightly more attacking. Why, I hear you say? Because we need to get the best out of Deli Alley. Um, why is he not playing? Injured. What a way to go. What a way to go. Broken collarbone, so he's a few weeks away and the, the season is going to start. So he's going to miss the start of the season, as is his then backup, Ravel Morrison. So, yeah, brilliant. The idea is to have the two wide players cutting inside, supporting the advanced playmaker, who may change his role depending on who's playing there, with the fullbacks who are very adept at attacking. Both Walker and Rose will get forward without needing to be prompted too much. So that gives him the space out wide, they provide the width. Young or whoever is playing on the left and who is ever, ever playing on the right will come in and support the central players and then an more backup Kane up front. The central midfield pairing, whoever is playing the defensive role will, will hold the line and then the ball the box to box midfielder will then push forward as necessary. The four four two that we're we're hoping to shape up with is very similar and again it's kind of been born of the fact that our key attacking midfielders are, are now out injured now levy wants possession football so play out of defense is almost a given we need to pass into space because we've got pace oh, rhyming again but because we've got the pace out wide we need to utilize that and play out of defense hopefully means we won't hoof it around too much again the goalkeeper will be set to distribute to the fullbacks because that makes sense it helps with the possession thing it's on counter at the moment that will change depending on the game who we're playing etc at higher tempo because we want to go at the, the opposition harass them we'll probably put a bit of more pressing on as well depending on how things are going in game and much wider because we need to make the pitch as wide as possible to allow those fullbacks or wing backs even to to bomb on forward but that's the theory anyway and i'm sure that will all go to to pot once we actually get there so yeah you know what i'm like you know what i mean if you if you are new here Without a doubt, I will have changed the formation within five games' time. Almost guaranteed. So, now you know. Sorry. So, in total, we have made £76 million. In total, we've made £76 million from selling on players, and we've actually only spent £99 million. So, of the £50 million transfer budget, we did have to spend an awful lot on sacking a number of staff members, and we will go through the staff in the next episode, if that's something you care about. If you don't, then let me know in the comment section down below but normally staff's quite important you know they do the training and yeah, they're not important no one cares right then that brings us to the end of this little introduction to homegrown hotspur battling brexit I finally got that right if you've enjoyed it pop a like on there for me and join me next time where we'll be taking on everton in our first game of the season with mass upheaval, lots of player changes, no tactical familiarity, what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> if you haven't already done so, why don't you subscribe? Yeah, I'm sure that's a good idea for you to do so, because then you'll get notified of when the next episode of this goes out, which is tomorrow! Yeah, you don't have to wait long. Oof. What a treat. Treat. Anyway, that's enough from me today. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye, not adios. What is he playing at? Maverick. Maverick.